Vancouverite. I'm Alex Biron, here with my co-host, Simon Arms. Hold on a second, Alex. I want to introduce myself today. Can I do that? Is yeah. that acceptable? Yeah, can you do it without maxing out the Sorry. microphone? Sorry! My name is Simon T. Armstrong, Esquire. I want to say peace and love and unity and respect and much love to Ja. Thank you. Go ahead. That was terrible. <laughs> yeah. What the fuck was that? Uh, just a little bit I was doing. Did you write that? No, absolutely not. Just came I to can't me. believe I just asked if you wrote that. Of no, it just came to that. me. Of course not. That was the least funny thing I've heard in weeks. Good. Perfect. <laughs> like, I, I want to start again, but I know that's not our policy and we don't do that. But Why? That was so stupid. It's just... Uh... Why, why were you... Esquire, yeah. Rastafarian. Yeah, you completely. This is my new up. thing. This is my new thing. I'm a Rastafarian. No, it's the same old thing. Terrible material. Okay. <laughs> uh, so All right. we're also here with uh, with Frida. Yes. Frida I'm Halgren. Here. Frida Halgren. Yeah. In, in the house. Yeah. And uh, we have quite a lot to talk about. We've got some current events, some uh, a, a, another local podcast, another competitor, really. We're doing a little podcast called Broadway Church, and this is uh, this is like it's it's kind of like a big TED talk, but about Christ, and they've got they've got drums on stage, they've got DJs, you know, it's not like a, a lame church. They've got young guys there. You don't have to wear like a suit or a outfit on stage. You can just wear like a a plaid top and jeans. They've got like the Britney Britney Spears little headset coming down and uh there's a lot to talk about i've heard this you guys haven't i haven't heard any of this i've, I've prepared some clips that simon has and uh yeah ladies and gentlemen welcome to broadway church my name is simon i'm one of the pastors here and it is an honor and pleasure to be able to speak today we are wrapping up our series called designer sex are you ready so not yeah! the most. Okay, good. I'm I'm excited to get going. Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, well, I'm ready to go. So he's he, ready to go. He actually got less applause when he said, "All right, let's go. Are you ready?" The second time. Yeah. yeah. No one's ready. <laughs> um, <laughs> so this guy to get like a, a mental image, he kind of looks like a. Is he sexy at all? Like, does he have sexy yeah, appeal is, in any way? Well, like, do you find reptiles sexy? Well, he's not unattractive. Okay. But he he has um. He has a definite, like, uh, his smile is a bit too wide. He, if, if, like, kind it's of got that... a horny smile. He looks, he looks brainwashed. I mean, there's really no other way to say that. He just, he's been, he kind of looks, here's what he looks like. Have you ever gone to Future Shop or one of those, like, electronic stores, and they try to sell you the warranty, and they're, like, they're doing that over the top? And this is, it's worked for me, it's worked for a lot of my customers. Is your name Steve? Can I call you Steve? And they give you that, <laughs> he kind of has that going, so he's not ugly, but there is something somewhat repulsive. Phony. About, um, repulsive yeah. and phony. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's get into um, it. Yeah, they kind of, what's the next one called? This isn't your grandpa's church. Okay, so this is where he's going to say, like, you know, ev forget everything you've heard about going to church. Church can be fun. This is going to be not your typical boring talk. This is going to be, well, let's hear it. Designer sex is sex according to God's design. Designer sex is human sexuality as God created it to be. Now, Pastor Darren kicked off this series two weeks ago um, in, with a, a message called The Power of Sexuality. We learned that God has a specific design for our sexuality, that God created sex, and he created it to be good. <laughs> he has a very moist mouth. Yeah. This is a wet mouth. And what's interesting is when he'll... He's going to get to some points in the talk that are a little controversial, where he has to skirt around certain certain no-nos. You can probably guess what those are. Oh. Certain fabulous no-nos. Oh, no. And the mouth dries up very quickly. Ooh. And you'll hear that his T's and his P's will get a bit clicky and a little bit... Uh. Yeah. So I'll point those out. But what I found interesting about that clip is that he's he's very buzzwordy too, much like the uh, the raw food junkies last week. Mm. You know, he's going for you know they've we've designed this for you. It's like a it's like a a handbag full of Christianity. You know, it's like 
And, and we had the last series that Pastor Mark did. It's like, you know, kids these days, what do they like? They like Netflix. They like fashion. So we got to choose words that are going to appeal to them. Unfortunately, he can't uh, say S's. And there's a lot of words Ooh. that have S's in this talk. Sex, lust, thrust. Designer. And Yeah. And the shawl sh just come out just kind of sounds like this. But uh, he's not just a man that can't say S's. There's layers to this man. <laughs> so uh, what's the next one? Bad news for Gaish. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is where uh, he's just going to kind of, you know, if you like kissing boys and you're not a woman. Well. All right. God designed sex to only be used within a marriage relationship between man and woman. Yeah. Now, play this again, and I want you to hear the, uh, the dry mouth oh, at the I very end. It. It's I very audible. God designed sex... To only be used within a marriage relationship between man and woman. Man <laughs> and woman. Can you imagine kissing this guy? <laughs> mm, yeah, I can. Ugh. Well, you, yeah, you wouldn't be allowed. He actually has a wife and she's even creepier, but, Ooh. you know, talking about that would be admitting that I had found him on Facebook and looked at pictures of him last night. And I think that would be crossing a line. So obviously I didn't do that. But, uh, yeah, there's, he's gone. <laughs> He has, there's no middle ground in terms of saliva for this guy. It's either like a 2012 end of the world tidal wave of like just mucus and spit. And then just like a Jerusalem, just desert of wood and ash and uh, so, yeah. His fucking like sex life must be so dull. And a lot of, I'm just imagining a lot of like full body linen pajamas and yeah missionary position. That's it. Yeah. Ugh. Or Frida, how's your sex life these days? Oh, it's great. Yeah. I'm I'm married to a man, so you know, as God intended, we we have sex. I can't tell you. if you're being uh, sarcastic or not. What? No, obviously, that's that's the truth. Good but for you. I, I've been also outside of a marriage and having having the dirty sex. So. Oh. I'm, having I'm the a dirty bad sex. The dirty I've... sex. If you're wondering what Simon Gow was like as a as a young buck, he's gonna get into. You know, he's growing up. He's finding about Christianity. He's obviously a big stud, and there's a lot of girls who just wanna get up all up in that dry mouth. Um, but they, you know, it speaks for itself. Let's have a. All right. So if you're not married and you're here, you need to know something today. God is not trying to ruin your fun. Okay, God is not trying to ruin your fun. I remember growing up as a single guy thinking like, what, sex is only to be used in marriage? And God, like, I'm not married and I'm not planning to get married anytime soon. And he's trying to ruin my fun up there like a big killjoy. Yeah. What? So he's just hanging out up there, just, just ruining Simon's fun. Simon's getting invited to slumber parties and they're playing spin the bottle and seven minutes of heaven and he, i mean he can't say the words but he also can't take part in the activities and it's that's how he felt as a young boy is that what he's saying yeah yeah all the times that he's been in that situation that girls just offer themselves to him and he's like no you're yeah. not married i can't do it as if a man would ever turn down sex if it's given to them it's very convenient you know that like because when i was in high school everyone would be like oh you you suck. Nobody wants you. You haven't gotten a blow job. And I was like, I'm going to kill myself. But he can just be like, oh, I ha it's no, this, it's a choice. I could if I want to. Yeah, exactly. I could be, I, I could have sex with all the women. <laughs> <laughs> Something makes me doubt that they were throwing themselves at him as a young, yeah. young Yeah, no, I can't Christian. imagine how, it was that difficult. How long have you been uh, married, Frida? I've been married for uh, half a year soon. Oh, just half a year? Mm -hmm. Congrats. Just half a year. That's a long time to me. Does it feel like a long time? Well, it's the longest time I've ever been married. So. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, we can, okay, well, this is good because we've got two unmarried, very sinful males True. here. And, uh, and somebody who technically is doing the right thing by his standards. Although there, there are some other boxes that he's going to get into that you probably are not ticking off. Mm -hmm. but, okay, You're following so, God's law. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, not, yeah, I guess. <laughs> you have to admit that. I'm also planning on going, not on purpose. To, going to the Broadway church. I think we should make a little field trip in the future. I need to be saved. Yeah. This, there's a lot of potential here. Um, <laughs> so, oh, here we go. Yeah, okay, I like this next one. 
reputable sources. Re- reputable sources, reputable, yeah. Reputable, whatever. Okay. Well, this is, play it, yeah. This needs an explanation, but. Uh, the Georgia Strait newspaper in February of 2013, uh, it ran an issue called the Lust and Thrust Report. And in it, its readers were surveyed this question. Can you have sex with no emotional connection? 69.1% of females answered yes. 84.8% of males answered yes. yes. So, but the Bible, you see, teaches something very, this is very different. Turn this off, yeah. He, he just gets it and quotes the Bible. But I thought this was interesting because it's like, you know, in other circles, if you're making claims and you have to back them up with studies and facts, right? But for, for him, he's just like, yeah, we went to the uh, a dated free newspaper from this city and we dug through the uh, the reader survey and that's where we got our information from. <laughs> it's like, and then, uh, yeah, and to counter that, we'll be going to the Bible. It's just like, okay, not a lot of jokes there, but I found that a bit curious. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I deserve that. All right. The next thing, okay, so now he's, what's the next one called? Simon Gets Deep. Simon Gets Deep. Yeah. Okay, so this is where he's going to show his kind of artistic side. Yeah. What, what's sex to you, Frida? How would you describe, what's it all about? Um, what it's about, um... <laughs> <laughs> Well, good. it's just something that you have to do because you want to do it because your body wants to do it. No. Okay, so this is... That, that really doesn't hold up by Simon standards. You're going to hear that this man is uh, Shakespearean in his eloquence. So, The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 24, in fact, that through sex, two people actually become one. Some people think that a condom will protect them from the pain and the consequences that come along with sex. But too bad we can't put a condom on our heart. (laughs) (laughs) The the pain and the consequences, also known as AIDS. Yeah. um, This guy would be a real hit at Café de Soleil Poetry Slam Night. (laughs) Two people can become one. You can't sheath your heart in a condom. (laughs) Yeah. He's, uh, what a guy. So, um, the next, yeah, what? Well, no, well, I would say that, you, no, well, you can't, you can't put a condom on your heart. That I loved good. that line. That was great, but it's. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have maybe like a joke to make about it or? You got knocked the fuck out, man! No, I was gonna go somewhere, but... No! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, what are we doing now? Uh, we're doing the next one. Okay. I, I had a... I made a whole activity for us to do after this clip, because I knew at this point we'd be kind of dying, and I timed it perfectly, because we are. So after this, we have there's a little uh, thing we can all take part in. Play the okay. next clip. Yeah. All my men in the house. It says, men, we imprint on our early sexual in encounters. Just like oh, some birds in. imprint uh, on, on humans when they're first born or, or um, uh, birds will, whatever, when they're, when they're hatched and they come out of the egg, whatever they first see, whether it be a dog or, or another animal or a human, too, they imprint on that figure and they think that's their mom and they follow it around everywhere you go. And just like some birds imprint, (laughs) uh, we as men, we imprint on our early sexual encounters. Okay. So I thought maybe we could all go through our early sexual encounters and see if this theory works. I, uh, I I don't completely agree with this because, or basically what he's getting at, and I think he talks about this later, is that if you, if you don't wait till marriage to have sex, you'll obsess about your first sexual experience and you're, you'll always be trying to recreate that. And you'll be lusting after that. I've done everything I can to escape from my first sexual experience. Yeah? I've deeply tried to eliminate it from my brain. It was a very awkward uh, first time aboard a cruise ship to Alaska. Yeah. Uh, I was too nervous to come. <laughs> there was an infomercial very loudly playing on a TV in the back. Uh, there was there was blood. There was vaginal blood. It was... I'm, I'm, I can't even talk about this. It was horrific. It was a horror show. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't say I'm really imprinted on it, other than the fact that 
I can't escape from. I mean, I guess his theory is right in the sense that it damaged me, although not really in the way that he intended. What was the infomercial? Uh, I don't remember what it was for, but I do remember it had that that jungle song, like. <laughs> what? Dun, dun, dun. I'll uh, yeah. here. Well, you, t- you guys talk about it. I'll find the song, and when you hear it, you'll understand. Why do you, this do you is... think that your first sexual experience has shaped your your whole life up to this point? Well, that depends on what you count as first sexual experience. I mean, I guess uh, intercourse is well, what the first old intercourse. Shyman's getting at. The intercourse, yeah, yeah. That's that's not necessarily the first sexual experience, but no. but intercourse, no. I would well, I had a very harmless kind of nice no blood situation. It wasn't the backseat of a car. Yeah. So I mean, that's kind of like not <laughs> best start. <laughs> but I don't, I don't, I, I don't mind having sex in cars now. So like, yeah, it's being maybe, tainted. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, I have the same experience. It's like it. You I, were on a cruise ship too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the oh my, oh fuck! You just threw me off so hard. Yeah, motherfuckers. Um, <laughs> no, it's just it just happened, and there was it wasn't particularly bad or good or it was just whatever. I was actually stoned like really high at the point uh, when we <laughs> when i had sex for the first time but i don't know it didn't uh, it, there's no no relation it's an all-american girl like you <laughs> doing with a geek like this <laughs> <laughs> i tried to get that one in there but <laughs> okay. okay so far this is one big okay <laughs> i need you to find the song ky brigantes we never stop because this was looping over and over again while I thrusted my <laughs> horrendous teenage body against this half Korean, half Jew. What the? F- what did you say? K Y Brigante. K Y Brigante. That's the artist. All right. Oh wait, no, that's that's. Uh, is that the YouTube user? No, 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 no. no yeah. <laughs> okay. No, the artist is. Oh, f- I can't even. I can't even say this. I'm literally too embarrassed to say what I lost my virginity to. <laughs> yeah, keep it going. An infomercial with the very loud soundtrack. Of Jungle Fever by Louis Vega. Oh, wow. And I'm not... This sounds too stupid to be real, but this is real. Let's relive young Alex's yeah. first time right here. Oh, it's probably going to play an ad. Fuck. That's okay. Th- that's perfect, because there was an infomercial at the time. TV cameraman. I get to shoot a lot of cool... Oh, I like this. Here it is. Oh, this is sexual. Yeah. It would have been hot if I'd been a, a better lover and she hadn't... As we journey through our lives... Hey, can I put it in? <laughs> You're really gonna let me do this? Side. Oh, this is great. Well, yeah, I'm guessing it was her first time Over too. Early. Oh yeah. Yeah. And because it would be weird if she bled a lot. If she bled fire. Fire. She never there has was like a ton of blood. In many it was just languages. gushing. There was just invoke just wasn't shares. enough. Share a spiritu and God this is hot. I don't think this like intro was in the, the song. Through music. Oh yeah. Oh wow. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> it's so romantic. I can feel it. Oh wow, yeah. <laughs> I'm a little bit nervous, but uh Oh. I'm in uh. imprinting all over you. <laughs> Is that blood? Oh no! <laughs> Are you okay, sweetie? All right, that's enough of this. <laughs> After the boat ends, let's date each other. <laughs> <laughs> Will we be pen pals? All right. What's the next clip? Click, click. Click, click. You okay, see, so when God... Sorry. This is where uh, Simon the Pastor shows off his his Bobby McFerrin-esque range and sound effects, you know, because you got to keep the audience interested uh, when you're doing a little sermon. And he's gonna, he's just gonna, woo, little dynamics. Check it out. You see, when guys have this, this early sexual experience, their brains, we, they start taking pictures of their experience and click, 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 <laughs> of everything that this lust environment has created. It's almost And then when we get to marriage, oh. we try to recreate our early sexual encounter. We try to recreate this lust filled experience and we bring this weird experience. fantasy stuff into it that makes our wives now. totally uncomfortable. And um, because we've imprinted on the lust and the sex and we haven't imprinted on the girl. But when you wait until you're married, you imprint on your wife. You imprint on the girl. And then your brain starts taking the pictures. Click, 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 click. 
This click, click, what click, the click, fuck click, is he click, talking click. about? When has a fucking like a camera camera ever camera made that sound? <laughs> <laughs> click, click, click. Uh. So yeah, I don't know. I haven't. I don't think I'm trying to recreate Jungle Fever on the Alaskan cruise. <laughs> oh. Da 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 da. da. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh brother. That's a good song though. I'm sure yeah. it will work. I do actually kind of like that song. Me too. Yeah. I'm feeling that song. Slip that in between the Barry White songs. Just, Ooh. Mm. Yeah, baby. But if you wait until your wife, you imprint on your wife. You imprint on the girl. Oh, yeah. She'll love that. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder, I, I would, what's this guy like in the bedroom? Just a, a dullard. A dolt. A dullard. Just so mm, uh, plain eh, and... Eh. <laughs> I think he might be fucked up. Eh. Like he's the one so? who want to go in the butt without asking first. <laughs> he's I, a freak. Yeah, sure. He's yeah. so freaky. Yeah, it's so insane. He must do something weird. <laughs> All right. Another clip. Another clip. Making sense is good. Yeah. Study after study shows that people I'd with like the best sex life. I'd like to say that he actually life... he did do a good job with that S. Every once in a while, he'll really commit, and he st <laughs> study. And you got to give him like a bit of a because that wasn't easy. Yeah, that's that true. wasn't easy. Yeah. I don't know. I wonder. If... <laughs> yeah, play it. All right. Study after study shows that people with the best sex life are in a monogamous, heterosexual, married coupled relationship. I just thought I'd include that because. It's just so true, right? Heterosexual, like, like, married married coupled. couples have the best sex life. Like if you look at my parents, for instance. Uh, well, that's not maybe not the best example. Um, but yeah, you know, like you 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 make dinner, you tuck in the kids, you go into bed, you stare at the same fight. The st fuck, oh know. boy, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Was it good? Boo! Boo! <laughs> Rubbish! Filth! Slime! <laughs> muck! Boo! Okay. okay, can I have another go at that? <laughs> yes. You stare into the same face you've been looking at for years, and then just gently undo her blouse, and uh, press together your unkept legs. <laughs> just, and then Alex comes in, I had a nightmare! Get out! And just have great sex. Oh, your Great clammy, shesh. your clammy dad hands. I mean, I don't know where he's. Where did the fuck did he get that fact from? Who has he been talking to? It's the exact opposite. It's single gay men have the yeah, best sex life. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> In parks, <laughs> bus stops, through bathroom stall walls, nonstop thrilling sexual activity. Well, we have the I most mean, sex life. Yeah. Like, I'm sure your your sex life is good, Frida. I'm not trying yeah. to say that all married people have bad sex lives, but I I don't think. Yeah. Next clip. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. You're gonna give me the horn on that. Uh, I'm just relying. You're the one in charge of the. See, it, you need to stop waiting for me to cue you up. Like, do I need to say play the next clip? Not You're at all. Play the clip. No, not When at I'm all. running out of steam, and it, it's very obvious. Yeah. Just be like, well, it looks like we're ready for a new clip. <laughs> no, but you do that yourself. You run out of steam. You go, ah, uh, well, okay, play the next clip. <laughs> yeah. So. See, Frida, that's why we have the third mic. You're yeah. supposed to riff <laughs> oh. on what I'm saying. Okay. Okay, let's try that again. I'm gonna lose steam, and you're gonna you're gonna punch it up a bit, okay? <laughs> you know that's that's why uh, married. I mean, I don't know where he's getting these facts from, but but like it would make sense because like married. Like, I don't think necessarily married couples, but couples that have been together for a long time might have a little wordy better I'd say. sex. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Let's get get this next clip rolling. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Right. This. Confess and repent. Confess and repent. 
Um, this is kind of two sides to this coin, confession and repentance. Like most coins. The first really. side, confess, is simply, confession is just telling God what he knows already, right? There's no secrets from God. He's the God of the universe, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the creator of all things, all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving God. Like, let's be honest, right? Like, he knows. He knows. <laughs> you have to <laughs> you know you like confess that? before God. We're just telling him. He knows. he knows about my fleshlight. So when we... He knows well, about the candlestick that I experiment. I, well, actually, we don't need to. But he oh, knows about stuff. God, like, let's be honest, right? Like, he knows. He knows. <laughs> that sounds like so a when we confess I want that sound God, by, we're just yeah. telling him what he knows already. Let's take the stress out of confession. When we confess before God, let's take the S's out we're of the simply word being stress. honest with ourselves before a holy God, saying, God, this is where I need help. God, this is where I need you. So I thought maybe here we could all do a little confession. You know, it's the first step. Just admit some of the sinful things that we're guilty about, the bad things we do. And then, you know, because God already knows, but Simon, you want to go first? Yes. I, uh, I stole a dog out of my neighbor's yard yesterday and curb stomped it. No, Please I'm talking about me, sexual experiences. Well, Don't make up a stupid boner. little bit to avoid your, your pathetic sex life. I want to hear it. Um... I don't know. What? What? What are you looking for? I don't know. I was thinking, like, in my head last night when I was planning this out. Yeah. I, uh, well, why don't, you, why don't you kick it off? I mean, I feel like I've already given you guys a lot, and all I'm getting back is, I want shed shakes in a car. <laughs> and you're like, I uh, make something up, stole a dog, and curb stomped it. Curb, that's still irrelevant, right? American History X came out. Curb, animal curb stompings. <laughs> do you want to do your Esquire bit from the beginning again? Yeah, absolutely. That really killed <laughs> I'd love to, yeah. But maybe you're sitting here today, and uh, you haven't used your sexuality as God designed it. Yeah. And you're feeling so incredibly awkward as you sit here right Mostly now. Mostly because of my failed jokes. Perhaps but... you've engaged in sex before marriage. Maybe um, you're abusing your sexuality through lust mm -hmm. and fantasy. Lust. Maybe fantasy. the addiction to pornography has its grip on your life. Yeah. Is there any healing? Can God just divinely erase the memory of my past and previous sexual encounters? If that's you and you're sitting here and you're feeling this and you're, you're, you're kind of bumping up against this tension because we're trying to hit it right on the, on the nose this morning. If that's you, I want you to listen really carefully to this next part because this next part has been designed specifically. Specifically. That's a cruel word for Simon. But yeah, this is, this is for me. Yeah. And I like this because this is the part, this is the sell, you know, in like sales training. This is where they're getting the people that have shown up for Broadway church who aren't regular goers and to put the hook in them, you know, like, okay, well, you know, I've had, I had that gay experience in the Philippines and I've been fooling around, but is there a, is there a place for me in this church? Well, yes. And we'll be handing around the donation box in a bit, but for now, just know that we've designed the mm. next part of this exactly for people like you. <laughs> well, yeah, he's trying to he's he's really trying to narrow down that that demographic because he knows everybody's doing tons and tons of bad just, sexing. Just, just decadent all over the place. Mm. He sees it, he doesn't like it. That's great. Yeah. All right. Next clip. A fun crew. Why do you need to say next clip? You just play the clip. <laughs> And so uh, every Tuesday at 6.30 in the Lore Auditorium, we have this group of people meeting together, and the Celebrate Recovery crew, they actually help people bring wholeness back into their life. Uh, Pastor Paul Starrett heads this ministry up with his team, and honestly, so this just, is like a just pause it. flagship Just listen to the, I mean, this is just a fun crew. Just an exciting, I mean, like, I don't know what you're, you've been doing on your Saturday night, but check out these guys. Program. This, it's so good in, in helping people get accountable and on the road to recovery. We also have things called change groups. Change it's a 12 step groups. program that happens. The mm -hmm. next 12 step program that we're offering. So this is where he, uh, he can't exactly say like, if you're gay, we'll come and fix you and make you st straight. They're trying to avoid as much hate mail and bad publicity mm -hmm. as possible. But this is, you know, the go from gay to straight program. The 12 step, tw the first one being shame and guilt and the last one being now you're a robot straight closet man it's <laughs> it's very it's very bizarre what's the next clip 
uh, get practical. Get practical. So this is my, my favorite part. This is where he talks to a guy like me, and it's like, what can Alex do? You know, he had the, the weird Alaskan jungle fever. His flashlight's falling apart from frequent use. And uh, it's redtube.com shows up as one of his, like, frequent icon things when he opens Google. It's I'm a disaster. Okay. You don't know how to use the incognito tab? Because if you do that, then it doesn't show up as your most viewed uh, pages. It's a tip. That was good. Um, is is that a thing? Can yeah, yeah, yeah. If you uh, if you click new tab and choose incognito tab, it doesn't uh, keep any cookies or history. So you can go there as much as you want, and it doesn't show up as one of those. All right. Well, that's actually pretty useful. <laughs> yeah. I know. I know. So you are good for something. <laughs> uh, incognito tab. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Well, here's a here's a way where you know. If you don't want to be incognito, but you just want to address everything and change, what what can I do to get on the right path, Simon? Get practical. Get practical. Now this is where you know you thought getting accountable was awkward. Now we're getting all types of real up in here. Okay, get oh. practical. Yeah, um, I, I thought you'd like. We that. want to take practical <laughs> steps. He's he's doing a little something for the. You know, for the urban, the, the crowd. urban crowd. Yeah. yeah. Getting yeah. real. That's so if you're dating and you're trying to type a real up in here, okay? Oh. Get practical. I'd um, like a sound bite of that as well. We want to take practical steps. So if you're dating and you're trying to stay uh, pure and you're trying to avoid the pain, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, it means stop arousing one another. As weird as that might Step sound, one, no more uh, it means around. set up boundaries. If it means uh, no sleepovers, if it means uh, don't be at home alone don't together. Don't spend any time together. <laughs> a story he's told about Billy Graham uh, when he's traveling around Pause preaching. This. So yeah, those are his keys to a healthy Christian relationship. It's just basically don't see each other. And now he's going to share a nice story about a, a guy in their community of pastors. And this is what this guy does when he goes to like a hotel you know, because you're on the road, you get you get those little pop-ups, pay-per-view, steamy winter nights, only four ninety nine. Mm -hmm. You want to click it, you want to buy it. It's going to be incognito when it shows up on your receipt. Mm -hmm. You can watch you can watch MTV. What do you do in a situation like that? Well, he's going to tell you right here. Same clip or different it's right clip? at the end. Yeah, okay. pretty much. Where he's we're staying stuck. in a hotel. Uh, he says the first thing that he does when he goes to a hotel is he rips the cable cord out of the wall, and he says, "I'd rather pay to get it fixed." than had that temptation in my life. Because that's healthy. You know, just kind of go around and just des destroy things that could potentially turn you on, nip it in the butt, and then pick up the tap later, <laughs> as Jesus intended. Because as he, as he was touring around, you know, there was all sorts of scrolls, and he'd just burn them. <laughs> he has such an urge to jerk off to much music <laughs> that he needs to fucking rip out the the cord in the they, wall. They should be so pissed at God for why God? Why did you make me want to fuck all these women? Well, it's like, the devil that's making them want to do that. Oh yeah, that's you true. See? That's true. Didn't think about that one. It's the sexy, whoo, devil. Sexy devil. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus. And you've asked him to be the leader of your life and the forgiver of your forgiver, forgiver of your soul. <laughs> I didn't have a chance to set this one up. So this is a flub of, ep I mean, if he had been on our podcast and had flubbed this bad, it would have made the podcast. Yeah. Um, you know, you would think that a man that was blessed by Jesus and that was a conduit for holiness would have more control over his tongue than this. Mm -hmm. But he approaches the word uh, forgiver and it just gets crucified on his palate. It's, you got you got to just savor this, guys. If you've made a decision to follow Jesus, and you've asked him to be the leader of your life and the forgiver of your forgiver, oh. life and the forgiver of your forgiver, 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 and the forgiver of your Sound it out. Forgiver of your nope. sin. <laughs> God. Why isn't anyone in the crowd laughing? Like, what, you know, is there anyone there? Like, if no. I had been there, I would have given him. A t <laughs> t t today, Simon. This is why we need to attend Broadway Church. Yeah. Oh, that word got caught between the fucking tide of saliva mm -hmm. and his slug tongue so yeah. fast. Forget uh, the forget forget. The problem is that he has he has so much enthusiasm, but he's had to kind of bypass parts of his brains, you know, like the logic part and the open-minded, flexible part, to stay in this like stiff soldier of Christ. And that unfortunately, 
You need to stay loose to speak properly. So he's just I have the for 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 coke. I just hawked a fucking huge loogie into my mouth. I'll be right back. Oh my god. Oh. My So what do you think about these clips so far? They're very funny. Yeah? But it's very funny because I was raised Christian, so, like, I know the type. Ooh. Yeah. Excuse and I know, me. like, the kind of, like, types they get to talk to young people. You were raised in Sweden? Yeah, then? in Sweden. Very Christian. Very Christian. Like, both my parents, like, my mom wasn't allowed to wear nail polish when she was a kid because that was the devil. <laughs> and, like, there's so many things, like, that she wasn't allowed to do. I was, like, mm. they were somewhat normal, but... Yeah, I I went to church and like I I know exactly what kind of what kind of type of fucking person this is, is so far down the list of sins that like nail polish is yeah. is up there you yeah, know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. fucking is uh, the last thing you know on their mind. What? Well, I'm just saying that the oh boy, I didn't get that. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> let's move on. Heavenly Father. Today, as we come face to face with our sin, as the Holy Spirit stirs stuff in our hearts right now, and you're bringing stuff to the surface, God, in our lives. <laughs> Can you pause it? So what I like about this outro is that when you close a sermon, you want to really end on, on, a, on a high note, you know? You want to have music that's kind of transcendental and profound, and you want to use the big words. This is where you break out the... The eloquent language and he says stuff like four times it, they're really he, he needs to go back to sermon school and the music if you listen closely is just the opening chords of silent night played really slowly <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit tepid as we come face to face with our sin as the holy spirit stirs stuff in our hearts right now and you're bringing stuff to the surface god in our lives God, we pray right now that you would bring forgiveness, that you would cover us in grace, <laughs> and that, Lord, you would bring healing into our hearts, and that, God, today we would start on the road, we would make some decisions to start on the road to recovery in our life, that we'd be free from our past mistakes, and that, God, you would take control. Amen. 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 Man, did we did we miss one though? Because I think there was. Is there one that's like analogy? Uh, you might have missed uh, no, analogy. Miss is there any. one that has the word analogy in it? Oh, let's see here. Um, let's see. We got an unfortunate analogy. An unfortunate analogy. Yeah. Sorry, that was the end of it. But I want you guys to hear this. This is where he. I think we heard this, but. Did we? Well, let's try it. Yeah. Try it out. But God's not just trying to ruin your fun. He's trying to protect you. You see, when you no, have sex with someone, a part of you goes with that person forever. Oh, yeah. And you can never get it back. We liken casual sex to a casual gunshot. There's no such thing as a casual gunshot. When you shoot someone in the face, you can't say, uh. oh, sorry, I meant that as a casual <laughs> shot. That wasn't supposed to hurt. That wasn't, I didn't shoot that like for real, right? I didn't mean to shoot you in the face. <laughs> Really I just love hard. this because it's like, do you just want us to make money shot jokes? Yeah. But I, uh, like, <laughs> seriously, I'm not immature, so I'm not gonna do that. But Simon, like growing up and like when, uh, like when you start becoming a teenager in church, like they really take you in and like we have to like make sure that they don't do any of the fun stuff that they're wanna gonna gonna wanna do now. Yeah. So like, there's so many analogies for like, um losing your virginity and having sex like once that they told me like when i was in church yeah. was that well, um what? a woman is like an apple mm. and every time she has sex with someone it's like taking Dipping a her bite. in peanut butter it's taking a bite out of the apple oh. and in the end it would just be the little the, the core you yeah, keep the biting coral. until you get to the center and then you have yeah. the seeds which grows more apple and yeah. also another one <laughs> is that like um 
every time you have sex is to glue two pieces of wood together and then tear them apart and like some things get stuck in the middle so like yeah there's you really go hard and like trying to That's make sure funny. you know that you're not supposed to fuck around they just need to start showing them really graphic hardcore porn yeah and, like really like eel japanese eel in the anus porn. yeah exactly and do you want to do this yeah this is what will happen <laughs> yeah this is what sex is yeah because Swedish people are extra freaky, too. Yeah. So it's like you're really fighting an uphill battle. I mean... That's where shit porn originates, isn't it, Sweden? <laughs> when I went to... I, I used to go to, um, like, youth... What's it called? There's Sunday school, and then there's youth group. Because my parents would bring me to church when I was young. And they were really like, yeah, don't have sex, don't have sex. I was like, I, I can't have sex. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants to have sex with me. You're, I'm a lost... Uh, <laughs> I'm trying, yeah. believe me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but my youth group was so this is it, it was less exciting than an old folks home we used to play badminton but badminton was too dangerous so we'd you we'd get a balloon uh, that was blown up no. and we would hit it back and forth with toothbrushes <laughs> what yeah with toothbrushes and i remember this one scene where only guys showed up so it was like me and five other dudes in a basement with this uh <laughs> the, the leader and we're we're banging around the balls ball wait the, the you and five guys in a basement banging around balls that was a strange Freudian okay. slip maybe i've edited this memory but <laughs> no don't sound bite me don't I'm not okay good uh we're we're playing uh balloon badminton or whatever and he's like we need some music and he plays jeremy that jeremiah was a bullfrog three dog night Dern. yeah yeah and um yeah, well, what a sad, sad adolescence I had. We had a we had a ping pong table at my church, so it was a little bit more fun. But yeah, but that it's, sounds it's rad. Very suitable because I actually left church when I realized that I had fallen in love with a girl, and I was like, I know God doesn't like that. So I talked to my like youth group leader, and he hooked me up with like he gave me an email address and just like contact this person. Describe the fantasies you've been having. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. So wait, he no. hooked you up with like a yeah. Like he just, a, he just gave me an email address, you. and I I like emailed this person. This like I don't really know what you do or who you are, but and he wrote back, and that was just a a pastor, a homosexual pastor that chose to live without love in his life. Oh, and I was just like, nope, nope, uh, no, nah, nope. This because then like I, I think I was I'm very 14. happy. I'm I'm very healthy. Um, sometimes I get urges, but yeah. <laughs> you could be just like me when you're older. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, yeah, that was when I was... Bad Steven! Bad Steven! <laughs> <laughs> so I just realized that, no, no, this is bullshit. So you kind of just yeah. emotionally like, scissored your way right out the door. Yeah, just... exactly. All of that stuff they tried to smash into your brain just went out the window yep. as soon as you yeah. first had your your yeah, first urge. Like... Making love is like taking two styrofoam boxes and gently moistening them and rubbing them together in a, just a deliciously sinful <laughs> <laughs> see children all right um yeah so that's all the clips i guess so that's yeah. that's uh that's the broadway church this is going to be an ongoing thing i just wanted to give you a preview into this douchebaggery but yeah we'll go on some field trips we'll uh we'll start sending them emails we'll we'll develop this relationship until they sue it'll be decent <laughs> We should go. Uh, Absolutely. What? I'm going to wear a Richard Simmons t-shirt. We're going to bring RJ. We'll be fabulous. Oh, we'll heckle yeah. them until they throw us out. Excellent. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do they do healings and stuff? Simon he... likes the dick! Do, do they do healings too? Or is it just uh, uh, like a, a I don't think they thing. quite go into the... <laughs> Let it out! Let it out, my... No. It's, they have bands and it's like a... It's Vancouver, right? So you, why do I keep saying, like, every, every time I listen back to the podcast, I, at some point in the podcast, I go, it's Vancouver, right? <laughs> and it sounds so douchey because it seems like I'm trying to work in the title of, I swear to God, I'm not. It's just accidental. But yeah, they can't get away with any stuff like that. But they try to make it as evangelical as possible. And they have bands and DJs. and Right. Yeah. They're really trying. They have DJs. They're really trying to play it to the young. Yeah, people, it's, it really looks like a TED talk. If you look pic at pictures, it has that whole on stage. It's like a it's like a rock show. And um, anyway, let let's talk about something else. Let's make the jump to current events, things that have happened. It's always 
I don't want to talk about this too much because everyone sees it anyway, but did you hear about that fucker that stabbed the Pomeranian? I heard about it. I didn't read the story about it. I didn't it. hear about it. Tell me. You, well, you're aware of Pomeranians, yeah. are you not? Yes, I am. I love Pomeranians. I'm obsessed with them. It's my favorite animal. I would gladly give both of your lives right now to <laughs> save one Pomeranian. I, I just adore them. There is this Richmond fucker that stabbed his Pomeranian over 60 times in a, in a Jack the Ripper-esque motion. And, yeah. With what? I didn't say. I didn't say. Do you know how small the surface area of a Pomeranian is? Yeah. He must have stabbed every single part of it. <laughs> it was just a big stab wound at the yeah. end. Yeah. I'm going to take my stab wound for a walk. <laughs> You think he was dragging it around by the leash after? Just, I mean, if I could get my hands on this guy right now. <sighs> was was he under the influence of something? Does anyone know? Because it seems like like one or two steps would have done the trick, like if he just wanted to kill the dog. He was just a Chinese food chef. That was, that's <laughs> oh, yeah, all. yeah, yeah, yeah. He was just preparing dinner. Yeah, they're notorious. <laughs> that was bad. Yeah? It was, yeah. Oh. If you're going to go for a <laughs> racial joke, you can't just be like, he was Chinese, and they eat dogs and cats. I didn't say he was Chinese. I said he was a Chinese food chef. That's ex more or less the same thing. You need to be Not like, true. he was doing prep for, you know, the thing he was going to make. You got to approach it in like a more of an indirect way. It's joke class with Alex. <laughs> I'm, I'm a successful I'm so glad comedian. you did that. I'm so glad you did that because I was feeling so <laughs> douchey you there. Dick. And for only fourteen ninety nine, <laughs> I can send you the first ebook. It's called uh, How to Construct a Joke in 10 Days or Less. Here's how you make a racially insensitive Chinese joke. Yeah. Oh, oh fuck. God, what a douchebag. All right. Um, he stabbed it 60 times, right? Yeah. In in his house? I mean, or... I get the Pomeranians can be a little yappy if you don't train them properly, yeah. but it's like, ah! oh, if you don't shut the fuck up, ah! Ah! I'm going to stab you 61 times. You know, it's just such overkill. Oh, man. I don't really understand how the whole thing unfolded because it said that the SPCA found the dog. So I don't know why they were there. Or maybe they were staking the, this guy's house out already because he seemed creepy. But he the, facts, the facts are that you don't go to jail for a long time for killing a Pomeranian. No. It's a horrific crime. It, Do you go to jail at all? He, he'll get five months tops. He stabbed it 60 times and kicked it through a plate glass window That's when the SPCA found it. Really? Yeah. Did you, is that true? Yeah. What a jerk. What an absolute... Ugh. Well, he obviously has issues of some sort. Schizophrenic or like maybe he ate something bad. Look, I had a mental breakdown. <laughs> Wait, a massive psychological breakdown. And at no point did I just start stabbing stuff. How close were you to stabbing stuff? But I did go to the <laughs> Vancouver General Hospital and dismantle... The, uh, what's that guy's name? The guy that was in the wheelchair and he went around, he did like the Great Wall of China and Rick Hansen or I have no Rick idea. fucking finding out his name is really key to telling the rest of the story and not just derailing this entire podcast, but <laughs> that's okay. Um, I get, yeah, you can do things that are, that are not typical to your normal behavior, but God, I don't know. And so, so that happened, I guess there, he's going to trial. Well, We'll keep finding out about the story as it develops. The 99B line is bleeding. Yes. That was a, a big deal. It's bleeding. Did you see that? No. He's, uh, you're driving a bus, 99B line. Somebody takes out their cell phone because there's red liquid pouring from the ceiling in a uh, elevator door from the shining motion, just cascading down the, down the windows. And it's it's funny to see how people react to it because in the video they just abs they completely panic and not a single one of them is like hey um there's there's red liquid uh, dripping down from the back can we all get off the bus I think that would be safe everyone's just like open the door my fucking god no and it's like if that's how we handle ourselves in terms of like slight leakage can you imagine how much we'd shit the bed on like a terrorist on the bus or like something actually going wrong we're such cowards. 
But it's but the, you can't really judge from the B line, like ninety nine. Like I feel like I want to get off the bus every single second I'm on that bus because it's like <laughs> it's not for humans. It's just it's a monkey bus. Like it's just for <laughs> transporting animals. Like you're just, <laughs> like you're always uncomfortable monkey. there. So like yeah, like you just need a little <laughs> drop, a, a little bus. drop of blood to get. But it was like, a, it was a, the top a ton there. of blood. It looked as though somebody had been cram. It looked as though the bus driver had been cramming bodies in that little space that's like right above the accordion section and then it just hit capacity and started just it was actually really cool looking i have to see that i hate current events they're so boring it was hydraulic fluid hydraulic fluid yeah flu food fluid fluid you had a story right simon yes i have an embarrassing story what is it you'd like to hear it um i my mom gave me canucks tickets for my birthday and my friend who I was supposed to go with couldn't yeah. go with me anymore. And uh, <laughs> couldn't go. <laughs> he had stomach I don't problems? Have a friend, yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was thinking about who I should invite. And there is. The first I've heard of this. Yes. Thanks. And so there was a. Shortlist? We'll, we'll backtrack here. There is a, a person who works at the, the cafe. Oh. gives me free tea a lot of the time, mm-hmm. right? So I don't, I'm not, oh, oh, God. Great. I might free have tea. to leave the room. Yeah, so, you know, but I'm not, you know, I'm not that much of a of a suave gentleman, so I wanted a little more proof, you know. I, I wasn't going to just go ahead and invite her. Um, so uh, I'd actually stopped going because they charge, you know, way too much for tea. So I, I stopped going for about a week, and then I went back, and she went, oh, where have you been? Like, I've been, like, you haven't been around here for so long. And I went, oh, yeah, yeah. And in my head, I was going, yeah, bingo. Here we go. Free tea. Oh, and she's klutz. And she's missing me, right? <laughs> she's missing me. She, yeah, she, she noticed that I wasn't there. So, you know, I casually, of course, in my own way, approach, and uh, I said, so how would you uh, like to go to a hockey game with me maybe on Thursday? Mm-hmm. And she went, yeah, I'd love to go as your friend. <laughs> Continue. And me being the uh, slug that I am, I went, yeah, that would be great. That would be wonderful. And uh, so she she quickly moved on, changed subject. She said, who's playing? And I said, Vancouver is playing uh, Colorado. And she just looked at me and went, yeah, obviously Vancouver's playing. And so at this point, I went, "Uh uh-huh. And I picked up my tea because obviously I bought one (laughs) because I'm a a coward. And I left. And I just went, okay, well, I'll talk to you about it uh, later. And, uh, yeah, and I went with somebody else. (laughs) And now I can never go back in there and get another tea. (laughs) But I wanted to say that that if somebody comes up to you and asks you out on what's clearly a date, Mm -hmm. right, why would you say yes as a friend? Like, isn't that – because I'm not going up to random strangers and going, hey, you want to be my friend? You want to go go to this hockey game with me? Like, isn't that a little bit, a little bit fucked for somebody to do? Like, maybe she's just being polite. But yeah. I felt I felt like obviously if I wasn't a coward, I would have been like, no, no, that's not what I want, and then left. Yeah, it's uh, see the the best case scenario for situations like that is neither person tries to do it systematically and politely because if you get rejected systematically and politely, it sucks. And if you're asking, it seems awkward. And yet, in 90% of the cases, it's like, hi, hey, uh, I know I just come in here a lot. Uh, yeah, the, the green tea. No, the, the oblong. The, oblong. Yeah. It's, uh, and, uh, you know, I school to work. I uh, work to, I've uh, been working on my school work. And I was just wondering if uh, <laughs> you wanted to go to the Canucks game with me on the game, on the uh, the, the day of the, thir- the Thursday, please. And then they go, Oh, I, yeah, I sure would like to go, but, and it's just like this robotic exchange, you know, like if she were to reject you and she was just like, oh, that's so nice, but I just, I don't want to go. And I don't want to be the person who like bullshits or says something or like, you're a nice guy, but I I wouldn't want to lead you on. And that seems like, you know, that would be awesome. Right. Cause you could like laugh about it and then walk away. Yeah. But it's just that botched, like, oh, I'll save face here, and I'll, I won't hurt his feelings. I and got, you just want to throw was, your hot tea on her toes. Yeah. <laughs> How's your sandals now? Yeah. I was not, I was straightforward. I went, I'm, yeah. I'm going to hockey game. You want to come Sure, with me? okay. And, oh, Good for you. Yeah, but, so that's my... I know you, you, you're, yeah, you probably delivered it pretty decently. Yeah. She was trying to let you down easily. 
Yeah. Let you down easy. And that's, there is no easy letdown. But she sucks at it in that case. Because, yeah. yeah, there's a really easy letdown. No, sorry. I, and what I'm she thinks, someone she, like gets, she still gets to go to the game? No. Bullshit. You don't get to go to the no. game. No. Fuck you. You'll be watching yeah. it at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did the Canucks win? No. Oh. But, I actually, I should have brought her. Because there was this, uh, the, I went and my tickets didn't work. The tickets my mom bought me were <laughs> fake of some kind. That's and so great. I should have gone with her because that would have been so uncomfortable and terrible. That it just would have been a great story. But uh, anyways, I had to buy two new tickets. Why didn't they work? Uh, well, they were um, season, <laughs> season passes. Someone yep. had sold them to my mom. Uh-huh. And then they had gone to the game and oh. had got there before me. So they, they wow, somebody them. really. They the guy. Well, it was my birthday was in November. Uh-huh. It's whatever five months ago. They probably just forgot. Mm-hmm. Didn't you tell me that? Oh, see, now I feel bad because I, I I remember like a month and a half ago we were talking about girls and you were like, yeah, you know, I I like to feel things out first. Stuff. Yeah, For instance, totally. there's this girl at the local. Yeah. And she's been feeling me, and mm-hmm. you know, every time I go and it's. It's like, yeah, she gives me a tea for free, so I think I'm going to make my move pretty soon. I was yeah. like, yeah. It's that, this the same girl? Oh, yeah. Ooh. I remember because you went, like, oh, well, that's pretty brave because, you know, you're not generally supposed to approach baristas and yeah. waitresses. Usually they're just being nice and because just they're went, just nice to everybody. Yeah, and you went, want tips? no, I can just tell. No, I, Sometimes you I just know. know. I know these things. <laughs> But it is weird, like, giving you free tea that I would say that would be leading you on. No shit. And I went an extra step further and made sure. But she said, I want to go. Oh, I'd love to go with you as a friend. Yes. Yes. That was it. (sighs) All right. Frida, you said you you had some stories, too. You got anything? Um, I don't know if there's stories. I was just like thinking about like, because you were talking about um, going to a dispensary and like having a Skype uh, Skype consultation. Yeah. Because I work at a dispensary, so I'm just You like, do? Yeah, Which yeah. one? Um, the Buddha Barn on West 4th and U Street. Right. And it's like... Don't they have a Pomeranian? They have a Pomeranian. They have a Pomeranian. You protect that so, little rascal. Yeah, I would not I would never stab him what, is he 60 have a, times. <laughs> does he have, like, a one of the big haircuts or, like, the more boo, like, the little haircuts? He has a big ha- haircut. Can I come in and play with him sometime? Yes, you can. You can, you can this podcast is a success. <laughs> I'm officially dialing it in for the next 50 minutes or whatever we do. Yeah. But it's just like, it's, it's funny uh, working at a dispensary. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but especially like on West 4th, cause it, it's kind of like, cause that's where all the yoga ladies hang out and like, that's What's your where clientele Whole like? Foods is. That's, that's the clientele. That's the clientele. Yeah. Like just women being <laughs> really like, do you have any organic weed? <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> you have any gluten-free edibles and you know things like that and it's so <laughs> awkward because we have a lot of seniors too and like oh i love the old tokers it's in just there. so like oh oh you want something for sleep well we've got this rain and it's called violator kush like to try that <laughs> maybe this nice alaskan thunderfuck like it's yeah it's it's such a weird like kind of to try to keep it medicinal while it's like has those retarded names yeah that's fine. And uh, do you guys have a doctor in house? I don't want to do anything that will, mm. you know. We have a practitioner, but she's she's there doing like massages well. and acupuncture and stuff. So. Does she diagnose people and get you can get them cards? And yeah, she like, like writes recommendations. Okay. Yeah, because it's yeah that's mm-hmm. how it works now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's it's not it's not technically legal though. Like any of the dispensaries mm-hmm. that are open. It's just Vancouver that's like, oh, we don't care. So we're not going to spend time on this. But they do come. They like they they come in every once in a while mm-hmm. and like just check it out, making sure we're not selling to minors and stuff. Like, so it's technically they could just come in and shut it down, right? Like, yeah, well, yes and no. Like they sort of promised that they wouldn't, so it would be like a big weird mm-hmm. thing if they would, but. If they had like some form of evidence that we've done something to break the code, like because there is a code like that all the dispensaries has to follow to be able to stay open, like don't have mm-hmm. any plants in the store, don't sell to kids, make sure they talk to someone before they. Is get there like a, membership. An, a VPD email that's been sent out? Like, is it a written? 
thing, or is it more of just everyone knows these? Well, rules? There, there's an organization called Sensible BC that takes care of the com- communication between oh, okay. the dispensaries and the police. So that's kind of right what they're doing. And where do you where do you see it going in the next few years? Do you think it'll be? Because I almost feel like where it is now is perfect because there's no tax on the weed, and we charge tax. We oh, charge, charge GST. Tax. Yeah. Oh. So no, well. I, it's a good thing though like it's that's what's going towards making it like recreationally legal too yeah because that would be better because then you can focus on one or the other and not just have medicinal and recreational Fair enough, yeah. yeah but yeah well that's pretty much everything we uh have prepared i guess yep but let's just run the show into the ground now do we have plugs keep, to keep do? talking Plugs, yeah. Well, 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 let's just keep talking for a bit, though. Oh. We don't want to... We're... We can just cut... Let's talk for another ten minutes, and then we can just cut it out. Okay. If it, but we have a show now, so there's no pressure on thinking of anything. But... Something resembling a show. <laughs> yeah. It'll be fine. We had moments. We had, we'll we had some good times in the sauna. <laughs> But it's well, funny with the sauna because saunas are super common in Sweden. Like we have one in my house at home, and like in Finland, it's even worse. Like I, I went there in like a like a huge apartment buildings with like ten floors. Every single apartment had their own sauna in oh, there. Oh shit! So it's really a culture. Do you have any? Can start? I do a plug? Of, of course. Yeah, come to Lux Lounge on Wednesday, April first. It's the most amazing comedy competition ever. Yay. You, that's every Wednesday, right? It's every other Wednesday. There's comedy there every Wednesday, yeah. but and I run it every other Wednesday for a comedy competition where you can win $500 at the end. Okay, cool. So go to Lux on Wednesdays for comedy and yep. check out the comedy competition there if you want to do that. And support local comedy at Yak Yaks, Comedy Mix, and I will be at the Astoria tomorrow. But... This episode won't come out till Monday, so I don't know why I just said that. I'm Alex Biron, at Alex Biron88 on Twitter. Simon is Simon. At F I H L L on Twitter. That's Frida's Twitter. You can email us at 604podcast at gmail.com. 604podcast at gmail.com. That's right. If you like the podcast, I don't know why, but thank you. Go on iTunes, five star review, write something don't review the show that's boring and nobody reads those give me like a a recipe for tacos or write something cool if you uh are an interesting person in vancouver maybe be on the show or you can call in we'll be back uh we'll be back next week new episodes every monday thanks for listening bye